And today we are going to have a look at my Wonder of the Ocean Rise course. Now I'm going to do this in two parts. Um, from sharing this on LinkedIn, I seem to have got questions about it in sort of two different areas. So lots of people want to know a little bit about storyline and how I've embedded that into Rise. And other people want to know about the visual aspect. So how I've created these kind of visuals and the sizing I've used and the software and all that kind of stuff. So part one, we're going to have a look at Storyline and how I incorporated these Storyline blocks into Rise um, to create a nice kind of seamless effect. And then part two, I'm going to go into a bit of a deeper dive um, as to how I created the illustrations, the sizing I used, um, and all of that kind of stuff. So if you don't know who I am, or you've never seen any videos, or don't follow me on LinkedIn, um, one, how on earth did you get to this video? Um, and two, my name is Emma Berry. I am an e-learning developer and instructional designer, and I'm on a one-woman mission um, to make e-learning more enjoyable and to just push the boundaries of the software that we're using. So I am usually a storyline lover and do everything in storyline. I don't often touch Rise um, just because I find it doesn't give me the levels of customization and functionality that I want. So I challenged myself recently to create a course in Rise um, for children, uh, mainly because one of the positives of Rise is its responsive um, functionality, that it can change from tablet to mobile to desktop. And I wanted this course to be almost like um, a piece of homework or something that some that sort of six to eight year olds could do um, that would teach them about the ocean. But I knew from the outset that Rise would not give me the level of functionality that I wanted in terms of interactivity. So this has become a bit of a Rise storyline mashup. Um, so today I'm going to talk you through the storyline blocks that I used, why I used them, and kind of the pros and cons of doing it this way, um, the fiddly bits, the things that you know you have to consider. So let's dive in. Okay, so before we get into the nitty gritty of kind of how um, I've created my storyline blocks, I'm just going to briefly cover the why. So why put Storyline into Rise um, when Rise has got, you know, the functionality to be able to add these interactive um, blocks and uh, activities. And the main reason really for me was customization. So if I just add in this accordion interaction, for example, there's, you're quite limited on what you can actually customize with this. So I can customize the background of the Rise block um, by going on style. I can change, you know, the padding and um, the way that the accordion kind of functions. So whether you want these to stay open or not, and obviously you can change the content and change the image. But apart from that, you're actually very limited on what you can um, what you can change. You can change text color, but I can't change the background color of these sort of pop out windows. Um, I can't add any extra little icons here. I can't add um, anything like that. So I knew from the outset that I, as this is aimed at children, I wanted it to be bright. I wanted it to be full of characters and to be colorful and to be really visually striking. And that level of kind of customization is just not there with Rise yet um, when it comes to the interactions. So Storyline was able to kind of fill this hole for me or fill the void on this. So this is a Storyline block here. And you can see I was able to kind of add in these little characters to choose, you know, exactly the right colours that I wanted and um, make it feel very much like it was created in Rise though. So if we scroll down, for the how, we're going to focus on this little jellyfish slider interaction. So if I jump into Storyline, the first thing you'll notice is that the size of the slide is slightly narrower in height than the usual 16.9. Now, this was a purposeful decision um, because a slider interaction is tends to be kind of longer this way, so width-wise, 
but as I don't have instructions on this slide, the instructions are actually in the RISE course, so up here. Um, I didn't want this kind of empty blue space above and below the slider um, because when in RISE, this would then end up as kind of the learner scrolling down this empty space and it would just look a bit strange and a bit weird. Um, so I've made the slide size narrower so that it fits the space a little bit better and fits under the text better. So if we jump back into RISE, you'll be able to see the difference. So this is a storyline block using the standard 16.9 slide size. And this one is our narrower one. So if you notice on the 16.9, we've got a fair amount of dark blue space above and below this multiple choice box. And in this instance, it's fine um, and it works because we've got quite a heavily decorated divider above and we've got some text below. So it gives this sort of interaction room to breathe. Whereas with this slider, if I'd have used the standard 16.9, we would have had quite a vast amount of blue space above and below this interaction. So it just fits in the space a little bit nicer. So that's the first thing to kind of consider when you are adding storyline blocks in, is what size you want your slides to be and how they're gonna fit in the space. And this could be a little bit of trial and error. Um, I had to upload it a couple of times just to see how it fit and how it looked to get my desired result. So the second thing you're gonna to wanna to consider if you're importing storyline into Rise is your background color. So if like me, you want to create a quite a seamless effect, so as if the storyline interaction or a slide is embedded in Rise um, and is part of Rise and not kind of a separate entity, um, then you need to match the background color of your Rise block with your storyline file. So for this one, if I go on style, you'll see that the background color of the Rise section is the dark blue. And in the storyline file, I've matched that. The same goes for this jellyfish one. So the background color is this light blue. And if I jump into storyline, you'll see that the background color in my storyline file is the same. And this just, again, creates that cohesive look. Um, if you're not bothered about that, then it doesn't matter. Um, but it's just something to consider. So the next thing is if you are in tablet or mobile view, you will get a play button. Now, Rise considers a storyline block a form of media. Uh, therefore, it gives you a play button. Now, you can't get rid of the play button. Um, you may be able to with some custom JavaScript, but that's not my area of expertise, so I couldn't really um, provide any advice on that. But you can go around it and still give a fairly nice outcome. So if I click on the play button, you can see it jumps to my first slide. Now, usually when you first publish, you will get a black rectangle that goes around your storyline block um, with your play button. And it's this that you want to edit so that you get a screenshot of what the slider interaction is and not a black rectangle. So let's jump back into Storyline. And if I go over to the player, we're just going to explore how I've set the player up so that the only thing that you're seeing over your Storyline block is that play button. So the first thing to note is in terms of my player settings, um, I've got most, if not all of the controls turned off. And um, for this particular interaction, I don't need things like closed captions on um, because the audio that's being played is, is the same as what's being read, um, that's written on screen, sorry. So there's no need for um, subtitles and we have no video or anything, so we don't need the play or pause. I've also turned off the menu and all the glossary and notes and everything. The next thing you'll notice is the color. So if we jump into colors and effects, the background color of the player is the same as the rise block and the background of the storyline slide. Again, this stops the player being visible, makes it really cohesive and makes it blend in with its um, surroundings. If we jump back into features, 
we can see on the left hand side we have cover photo. Now this is what you want to change in order to avoid getting that black rectangle um, underneath the play button and over your storyline file. So if I just delete what I've got so far, um, you'll see once you check cover photo, you'll see an option for a plus photo. So if we click on this, you can choose to use the first slide. You can upload an image from um, the content library, like a stock photo, or choose something from your media library, or you can upload a custom image. Now, if you are going to use the first slide, just be aware that the quality might not be the best because what it essentially does is screenshot your first slide and use that as a cover photo. But when I tried this, um, the quality of the screenshot was really blurry and was really not good. So what I did instead was manually um, screenshot my first slide and upload that um, just because I could control the quality then and it was much better. And what this will do then is make it appear as if your first slide is already on screen and the learner just has to click play and then there we go, they're in the activity. So that's the next thing to consider is your player settings. The final thing to consider with storyline blocks is how it will appear on mobile. So with tablet, you'll get this play button, but the storyline block will remain in the window. So it doesn't take you anywhere else. Um, it might take a couple of seconds to load up like that one just did, um, but you won't be taken to a separate window. It's all embedded and it's all um, within the course. If you view it on a mobile, then what it's gonna do is open the storyline block in a separate window. Um, so, it will pop out the storyline block to be bigger, which makes sense because obviously viewing this on a mobile now here, you'd barely be able to read it. But it does mean the learner has to then click a X icon to come out of the storyline block and back into the main course. And this is just one of the downsides of embedding storyline in is it if you know I wanted to go for this really nice seamless scrolling effect where everything's in one place and the learner doesn't have to jump anywhere else unfortunately that's not possible on mobile um, but all you need to do is add an instruction to the learner that says um, if you're viewing on a mobile device then please select the x icon to um, exit this window. Alternatively, you could just say to people that they shouldn't be viewing the course on a mobile. Um, after exporting this one and viewing it on a mobile, I wouldn't recommend people do it on mobile just because of the storyline blocks. Um, they get reduced in size quite a lot and it does make them harder to interact with. And I think it just looks better on a wider screen. Um, so that's something else to consider um, when exporting your course, that the mobile view will be slightly different to desktop and tablet. But as you can see with this one, I've just put a little note at the end that says, select the X icon to close this window if you're using a mobile device. And that is it really. I will quickly go over just how you add a storyline block in for people that just aren't aware. So we jump back into edit. Let's just add a new section here. So storyline blocks sit under, I think it's the interactive or it might be multimedia. No, interactive, there we go, at the bottom. So you click on there. And the key thing to note is that you need to have your storyline file published to review. So you don't upload the file, you just grab it from review. And this is actually really handy because if you make changes um, to your storyline file, you can just republish to review and then you just um, click on the little pencil icon and you just find your updated review file. And then it just embeds it in. And there we go. There is a very brief overview of using storyline blocks in Rise. Um, so pros, it can add a really sort of engaging next level of customization to your RISE courses. Um, 
elevate your interactions and it can um, just provide a bit more variety in terms of the interactions you're offering. Cons, it is a bit sort of fiddly um, in terms of trying to find the right sizes and the look. Um, it's not as seamless as I wish it was. You still get your play button. And if you are on a mobile, then you will have to close a separate window, which is a bit of a downside. But overall, I think they're worth adding, um, particularly if you're trying to just, you know, level up your rise courses and make them a little bit more engaging. And there we go. So in the next part to this video series, I will be discussing the illustrations and the images that I created, how I created this and the sizes um, that I used. So if you're interested in that side of the creation of this course, then do keep an eye out for that.